Good evening and welcome to Losses Above Replacement, the greatest baseball podcast to grace your ears. I'm today's host, Matthias Salton Kurosaki, and with me, as always, we have my amazing co-hosts, Ryan Splash Potts and Alex Clark. Gentlemen, first things first, as we begin every show, how are we doing on this fine Monday evening? I mean, right now, the uh, we're recording this right after the uh, Texas Rangers took Game 3 over the Arizona Diamondbacks, and the uh, result was not what I would have liked, but uh, it's okay. Don't worry, it's just a little bit outside. Uh, shout out to Moreno. But anyway... I think I'm having a good time so far, like tomorrow or when this episode is going up, it will be Halloween. So a uh, happy Halloween to all of our, uh, all of our listeners. I hope you guys are all having a fun time. Hope you're all getting lots of candy or partaking in however you like to celebrate. Uh, what's good guys. So rapid fire. First off, the Phillies are ball lickers. Uh, second, h- how do you have a player named Michael Meyer on your team and you don't feed him a touchdown the day before? for Halloween, and three, go Ravens. You know, you mentioned Halloween. To, uh, so, I guess today, when this goes up, is actually my parents' anniversary, uh, 41 oh, wow. years. So, yeah, uh, happy anniversary to them. Uh, they are currently on the other side of the world. Uh, I called them oh. already. But, they are, yeah, they are on, in Japan right now. Uh, so, I've, I've been looking after the cats. Uh, it's kind of exhausting, I won't lie, uh, taking care of them. But it is what it is. Uh, they haven't destroyed our apartment entirely. So I guess that's a positive. Uh, I've had a lot of fun watching the playoffs, though. I thought I think the World Series has been pretty entertaining. I feel like it's it's weird. This is uh, one where I feel like I don't have a real uh, rooting interest necessarily. I feel like, you know, I, I feel I sort of have a team I want to win. But, you know, it's not like I'm going to lose sleep over whoever wins this World Series. So yeah, it's a. Uh, you no, know, it's it's weird not having an NL East team in the World Series right now. I'll say that much. But, anyways, speaking of the World Series, let's get right into that. Uh, we, as Alex said, we are recording this after Game Three. The Rangers are now up two one. First game, I mean, that was one of the best World Series games I've watched. I am quite glad I stayed up to the end of that. Uh, I, for for context, I had to be up before five a.m. on Saturday morning. Uh, for an inner squad competition, and uh, I stayed up through the end of the, the game. I'll be honest, uh, when Garcia came up, I was really thinking, man, like, I, I have time for, like, one more half inning, and then I should probably go to bed, and then hit the home run, whatever, I went to bed. Uh, game two was a bit of a blowout, and game three mm-hmm. was a tightly contested game. So, guys, what are some of your big takeaways from these first three games? What stood out to you? Um, the big thing that comes out to me overall with this is the fact that I'm, I know, I feel more and more right about how the Diamondbacks play baseball after watching these three games. They are very good at playing from behind. They're very good about once they get rolling, it is very hard to stop them. And their clutch hitting has been fantastic over the, over this series, as well as, as it's been throughout the entire playoffs so far. Um, I will say this though, and you can quote me on saying this. If the Rangers win this postseason, it's all going to come back to that game one. It's all going to come back to where the Diamondbacks had the lead five to three in the ninth inning and blew it. Paul C. Well, the first time since 2021 that he has given up a run in the postseason and gives up a two run home run to Corey Seager. And it all just kind of fell apart from there. So at that point, that's where if if Texas wins this series, that's where it's all going to boil back down to. And because at that point, if that result is reversed, then you have going into today's game, the Diamondbacks leading two games to nothing. That would be two one after today's matchup. Well, yesterday's matchup before when this, uh, is going live. But at the same time, I I will also say that if Arizona wins it overall, still they are going to be one of the most scrappiest winners that we've seen in recent history especially considering which isn't too hard to say uh considering that most of the time it's been the uh houston astros winning uh although i will say number one scrappiest team to win is still the nationals so at least in recent memory yeah this has been an odd series uh first off shout out to austin hedges for one of the worst at bats i've ever seen it was like april marcelo zuna um just 
three sliders 10 feet off the plate and he swings through all three I, of them. I, w- I was i was ready for him to hit a walk off honestly oh absolutely that was definitely <laughs> yeah. gonna happen but el bombi like saved us from like an even greater orgasm there but I, the diamondbacks play this weird brand of baseball and i'm going to explain it the best way i think i can and that's with a football analogy uh this is like the 2007 giants that the sacrifice hitting like the bunts that perdomo lays down they have eight sacrifices in the playoffs the sacrifice the quote-unquote small ball is like eli manning the home run power of the offense is like the defense so you look at it and you say oh eli manning super bowl mvp he scored 17 points like yes technically he was good in that game and they won the super bowl and he helped but i think it's a case of you still need hitting production and i can appreciate the strategy involved i can appreciate the um the uh, like physical ability to lay down bunts because believe it or not, professional baseball players don't do that as often as you might think um, or as well as you might, especially think. in the no DH era. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, props to Perdomo. He has 26 sacrifices over the last two seasons, props to this Diamondbacks team, but you still have to hit the baseball, right? You still have to get men on base. Mm-hmm. You still have to have some extra base power. You still have to hit some home runs. And even in game one, the joke was, oh, well, the the Diamondbacks were small ball scoring runs. Well, before Seager hit a home run, guess who had more home runs in that game? Arizona. So if you out-homer your opponent, you generally win in the playoffs. We've we've known this. Uh, I believe the last team to win the World Series who did not out-homer the opponent was the 2015 Royals. And they had one of the greatest bullpens in the history of the sport. So you get a once in a generation bullpen and you win the World Series without home out without out homering your opponent. Congratulations. We saw it today. Texas, it's the only home run of the game. Corey Seager, two run shot off uh, Brandon Fott, who I thought Fott was excellent today, but Corey Seager, only home run of the game. Texas wins. And it's not as simple to say, oh, whoever has more power entering the series wins the series. But the small ball stuff, I think it's a little overblown. You are playing to get one extra run here or there. There's situations that's perfectly fine. You know, bottom of the ninth, you need to you need to tie the game. Absolutely. Let Corbin Carroll bat with a man on second and one out instead of Geraldo Perdomo. Okay, fine. I, I can understand that or get it down to the middle of your order. But I do think people kind of take the small ball stuff and run with it a little too much because Arizona's in this spot. And that's oversimplifying when you've had Merrill Kelly bubbled out in game two. Brandon Fott has been very good uh, since his wild card blow up. The bullpen has been very good. The complimentary hitting, like Cattell Marte is on a historic hitting streak. Tommy Pham is going off. Corbin Carroll's doing stuff. And I think when you're saying small ball this, small ball that, you are like trying to throw it all on the team when there's individual players balling out here. Yeah, I mean... The, 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 what we're seeing here because home runs i think i mean I, I think it's obviously really important that you have power hitters on your team that i mean hitting home runs gives you a much better chance of winning the game uh, that goes without saying but it's also that the rangers are hitting them with men on base and that's the difference between them and the phillies you know you see you see mm-hmm. the phillies are not in the world series which i have i'm dead wrong about it i'll say it i thought i I was I, right I, about I, it. I was right yeah, about okay. it. Yeah, okay. So Alex, my wallet right is about angry. It. But I, you know, I thought the D backs were dead after game two. But you look back at it, and really the Phillies, it like all but three of the home runs they hit in the postseason were solo home runs. And I mean, solo home runs, I mean, yes, they go over the fence, they give you an automatic run, but at the same time, I mean, you can hit all the solo home runs you want if the other team executes with men on base. You know, guess those two run, three run hits, then you're you're going to lose. And the Rangers have gotten two two run home runs from Corey Seager, and they've you know effectively decided the games. I mean that here's the thing: that home run in Game One, Seawald executed. He elevated his fastball to the target, but Seager was sitting on de- dead red on a piece of cheese up in the zone, and he destroyed it. So 
you know, it's hard to, hard to fault Seawald for that. I mean, credit to him for getting out of that inning. Adolis Garcia has been fantastic all postseason, really. Uh, that, Adolis that Garcia has run. been one of the – Adolis Garcia has been single-handed probably one of the most impactful bats in recent postseason history. He is yeah, the he most, has most, the most RBI – yeah, RBI we'll record start, for a playoff run. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, he he, and of course he passes David Freeze, who, uh, as Rangers fans know, he he kind of popped off that postseason. Uh, that was uh, so, and, and of course he broke the record on the anniversary of Game Six of the 2011 World Series. Uh, with so, a walk off Jack. Exactly. Yeah, with a walk off Jack mm-hmm. in the 11th inning. That was, I mean that that was awesome. Really, that that game as a whole was, but. You know, the Rangers bullpen, uh, I I have been doubting them, I feel like, all year. I really did not think they were that good. Uh, but other than game two, they've actually been really good. And again, today, with Max Scherzer leaving after three innings, uh, the bullpen, I mean, one run over six innings. Uh, John Gray was fantastic, although now who knows who's going to start game four. Uh, Jose Leclerc, again, I know he got a little help from – uh, the home plate umpire, but still, little bit he of was a li- little bit of help, yes, but like he's been largely, he has not given up a run to anyone not named Jose Altuve this postseason. So he's been really good, actually. Uh, the the here's the tough part for the Rangers now is that Adolis Garcia had to leave tonight's game mm-hmm. in the eighth inning uh, with left. They described as left side tightness. He's going to get an MRI. Uh, Max Scherzer, like I mentioned earlier, he left the game early with back tightness. He says it's just back spasms, but who knows if he's going to be back. So considering that the Rangers might be down two significant players, how much do you guys think that alters their chances at hanging on to this seriously? Because I think the D-backs definitely have players where they can, they can take advantage of the Rangers while they're sort of reeling a little bit. That's kind of exactly what I'm thinking right now is that I think that right now when it comes to the Rangers or when it comes to the Diamondbacks, this is a time that they have to capitalize. And that's not even so much the that, oh, hey, they have the advantage. No, it's they have the advantage and need to do something with it. Because at this point right now, like you don't know if Scherzer is going to be gone. You don't know if adult, um, at least Garcia is going to be gone for the rest of the series. That's just pure speculation. We, they, for all we know, Adolis could be back in the lineup as lineup as early as tomorrow, and because we don't always saw with it again, I I don't know if there's any official word that has come out at the time of recording this, but all that we saw was that he hit a fly ball to center field, and as soon as he was done with the follow through of his swing, he was grabbing the left side of his lower back, and that could mean any number of things. We don't know how serious it is. We don't know exactly what the injury is. It is purely just speculation right now. And if it's bad, if it is bad, then this gives Arizona a huge window to work with. Because, right, like we said, we saw everything that Adelise was doing. And Adelise is one of the main reasons, if not probably the biggest reason, why Texas is here right now, right alongside Corey Seager. Like, on the offensive side of things, those two have been doing the majority of the damage. So, when you get rid of one of those, don't get me wrong, Corey Seager is great. But Arizona has been showing they can put up runs when it matters. So, I don't want to be a wet blanket here, but I'm not as concerned as you might think losing one of your starters and losing uh, your eh, 1B option offensively. Texas has a very deep lineup. Even the guys that aren't producing, the Josh Youngs, the Jonah Himes, and Nathaniel Lowe's of the world, those they're batting like six, seven, eight, right? So you have Marcus Simeon, who had a huge RBI today, finally got off his little schneid. Corey Seager's been excellent, of course. Evan Carter was the fourth youngest player ever to hit cleanup in a World Series game behind Miguel Cabrera, Ty Cobb, and Juan Soto. That's one heck of a list um, with uh, a Hall of Famer, a future Hall of Famer. I, Juan Soto probably one day and then Evan Carter probably. Who I, yeah <laughs> at yeah. this rate um so I'm not as concerned I think the depth is still there uh you're just gonna need someone else to step up and I think they have the pieces that someone else can step up and with the rotation 
remember they entered the playoffs without Max Scherzer and Scherzer had not pitched particularly well in the playoffs. So they were covering those innings anyway. And it sort of reminds me of when the Braves lost Charlie Morton in game one of the 2021 world series, that there's all this panic in Braves country of how are we going to cover Charlie's innings? He's not going to pitch in game four. He's not going to pitch in game five. He can't pitch. He can't pitch. And that's what great teams do. They cover these innings. John Gray comes in and locks the door. He was excellent today. Spores comes in, locks the door. A Chapman comes in and, uh, a light uh, locks the door with uh, minimal effort. I'll say uh, he merely closed the door. He did not. Yeah, I was going it. to say he he got an 114 mile per hour double play ball to get out of that mm-hmm. inning. Yeah, after giving great up a play run. by Seager, by the way. Yeah, uh, and then of course Jose Leclerc comes in. So I think Texas has the arms to cover the innings. The I don't know three innings. What were you expecting out of Max Scherzer in Game Seven? He hadn't pitched. He'd pitched three times in two months. And he's going to throw, I don't know, 50 pitches and maybe they're good pitches. Maybe they're bad pitches in game seven. Well, maybe you don't even need to go to a game seven. So I know it's going to be tough tomorrow uh, or today at this point um, to cover those innings because you were going to use John Gray, but now you used him up today. Um, But I think Texas can definitely cover the innings, can definitely cover the at-bats. And I'm not wavering in my uh, I guess, support of Texas winning the series, even without Adelise or Scherzer. Yeah, we'll say, I, yeah, I agree with you that Scherzer, I don't think is as big of a, losing him, I don't think is as big of a blow as it may seem. Uh, to your point, I mean, he re- he struggled in ALCS game three. He wasn't particularly great in game seven. And even, even today, I mean, the D-backs were making hard contact against him. I mean, they, mm-hmm. he got some help from Garcia when he threw out Walker trying to score on Tommy Pham's single. Uh, you know, losing Garcia, it would hurt, I think, for sure. I mean, I, I guess you go from having a great one to nine to having a great one to eight, maybe. I mean, with all due respect to Travis Jankowski, who's a very – he's a pretty fast runner and a solid defender. He doesn't quite have the same thumb. Garcia but I, I, mean, I mean I agree but I think you just you kind of just adjust the strategy and yeah who better to adjust the strategy of a World Series game than a, a manager that's won three of them you know yeah so I do think he's that been in the World Series quite a few times out. yeah that helps out there and uh also Mets legend Jankowski you know that's yes. just going to be a different you, let's mm-hmm. say you plug him in in the nine hole um that's that probably where he gets yeah a quote-unquote secondary leadoff guy that Simeon and Seeger can drive in and I know if he's on base, he can. He's a threat to steal a base. He's a threat to take the extra base on a, a single or a double. And I think there's just a sort of a new fold. And I don't think this is going to prevent the Rangers from winning the series or prevent Bruce Bochy yeah. from putting on a masterclass here. Yeah. No, I think also. I mean, with Garcia, Garcia has been hitting third this series. I mean, he can just move Evan Carter back up to the three spot. I mean, he's. I think he's proven he's more than comfortable hitting under the bright lights, especially in the middle of the lineup. And I'm assuming he's going to be hitting, you know, third or fourth or second probably for most of his career. So, I, by the way, I've been super impressed by that guy. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he, he he literally was not legal drinking age in the United States until this August, and now he's you know tearing <laughs> the cover off the ball in the playoffs. So right, yeah, it, it's right now. Is legitimately right now one of the, the most interesting players in this postseason. I mean, we're watching him right now. He doesn't look like a rookie. He looks like a guy who's been here for a long while, but has the ability of someone that has uh, the ability of a rookie that still is trying. People are still trying to figure him out, too. Like his game is very good when you have good bat to ball skills, like he has great defense and great speed. That makes it extremely hard for any pitcher to truly work around you, especially when you not only can put the bat on the ball for a quick slap single, but also, you know, put the ball over the fence a good chunk of times too. Like he's, he's got pop in that bat. You can't just throw it high and hope he just, you know, pops out. No, you throw it high to him and he's going to put it about 20 rows back. And he's got, he got excellent plate discipline. I mean, he, you know, call he just, Carter for a reason. Yeah. He just, he doesn't chase. I mean, it's crazy really. I mean, it feels like he doesn't overswing necessarily either. So, question. Heading into the 2024 season, American League Rookie of the Year, Evan Carter or the field? I mean, who would the field be? That's the thing. 
That is yeah. what I was asking on Twitter the other day. Of course, we don't know where the likes of Yamamoto are going to go. Yeah, Yamamoto. So maybe he's on the Red Sox and that throws a wrench into it. Or, uh, but I mean, that's the crazy thing, though, is that Carter is going to have rookie eligibility next year. Very, uh, very 2021 that's Randy Rosarena. I was going to say, yeah, uh, Rosarena. I mean, then again, um, I, I remember thinking uh, Sixto Sanchez was going to be a strong rookie of the year candidate. Which, by the way, Sixto still has rookie status because he hasn't pitched in three years. Ooh. That so, uh, my mind. Evan I mean, I feel like man. I'd probably have Carter because, like, like I mean, we don't know where where Yamamoto is going to be. Uh, and then, you know, there's Imanaga who's going to be coming over too, probably. I mean, there's – we don't know which prospects are going to debut next year. I think uh, – Junior Caminero, I think, will be in the majors for the Rays. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you see Drew Thorpe for the Yankees at some point. But Jace Young with the Tigers. Jace Young with the Tigers, which I believe that's Josh Young's younger brother. Checks out. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were both infielders who played for Texas Tech. <laughs> also, that's crazy. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's where we're at in the World Series. Dan, any other final thoughts before we move on? I no, want to give I a think... shout out to Brandon fought. I he really uh lived up to his name and fought through the outing today. I thought he was excellent. Um, he had made one mistake, quote unquote, to Corey Seeger. It, it's freaking Corey Seeger in October. Like, come on, what are you doing here? Uh Seeger tied for the second most home runs by a shortstop in playoff history behind one Derek Jeter. Uh, he's played less than half as many games as Jeter, by the way. A very uh eerily similar numbers to Reggie Jackson in the playoffs, uh, 18 home runs in 76 games for Seager, 18 home runs in 77 games for Reggie Jackson. So that's bonkers right there. Mr. Uh, October, maybe. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> Mr., yeah. Mr. Uh, the new October shout out to Bob Nightingale. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I thought Mr. Brandon fought, he pitched. I've said this before, like an ace. He didn't necessarily have ace stuff, but just enough to get through you know, five and a third innings, just enough to help out the Diamondbacks bullpen. I know they lost, I get it, but those kind of innings that in this three uh, three games in three days, those are going to be critical outs that you don't need Castro to cover. You don't need Seawall to cover. You don't need Ginkle to cover. You don't need your high leverage guys to cover because your starter goes out and covers it. So I know the Diamondbacks lost. I know fought allowed the uh, the big home run to Seager, I get it, but I thought he was excellent tonight. Yeah, I think right that's, now when it comes to That's the thing, this, though. It, it, yeah, go go ahead, Alex. Yeah, when it comes to the series right now, I like I said earlier, I think it's really going to come down to that first game. If if the series co- uh, turns into like a five or six game series, and then, then I don't think it will as much. But if we're getting down to game seven, that first game is going to loom very, very large. And I also think that um, if Adolis is out for the rest of the series, that will put a big damper on, on Texas because now you not only do you lose one of your best hitters, but now everyone else has to bat up. That's one of the things that I always find weird whenever you're talking about you know, trading a player or trying to add on another player. Is that not only does getting a good guy as like yeah, put let's say like in football like a wide receiver right not only does getting a great receiver mean that you now have a number two but your number two now becomes a number three and then your number three that becomes a four and you're just your skill at every level gets stronger but it works in the inverse as well if you lose that player the other players have to step up and if they can't step up to that challenge then that's when you start to really see some collapses. That's why whenever you lose a big-time player, a, a lot of times teams have trouble recovering because it's not that they just lost that production. They lost that production and that spot because everyone else that worked well in their current spots has to play above it. I mean, I I've, say, I've seen that a lot. I will say this is a team that started Robbie Grossman batting third Oh yeah, in the Tampa series. So, uh I, <laughs> Baseball's a weird <laughs> sport, man. It's yeah. baseball's a great sport. Odd. Also, I mean, shout out to yeah. Jace Peterson getting that playoff at bat. Yeah, on base Jace, baby. Yes. Shout oh my shout gosh. Tommy Beautiful. Fam, baby. Shout out to Tommy Pham. What a Dude, legend. I love Tommy Pham. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so happy that he's he's in the playoffs and doing well right now in the World Series. Uh, 
Because it's crazy because he's been on a lot of good teams, and this is the first time he advanced past the LDS. So good, good, good for him, really. Uh, and no, I think you know it's pretty big that the D backs have not had to use really their big arms these last two games. You know, Paul Seawald and Kevin Ginkle feels like, I mean, they they've been pitching almost every game uh through game one of the World Series and now they've had a couple games to rest. So I'm sure they're gonna be all systems to go in games four and five. And you know, you get an off day after game five if you make it that far and then you got, you know, they're they're gonna need them as much as possible those if if it does end up back in Texas. So mm-hmm. anyways, uh we're gonna move on to uh rant roulette. So I'm gonna throw it over to Alex who has all the props. So Alex, go ahead. All right, guys. Welcome back to Rant Roulette here. We have a whole bunch of topics here every week. One of us gets a topic that does not have to be about baseball, but it absolutely could be. We have all these topics that each of us submit to every single week. So we constantly have a full a full regulating system of questions that can be asked. And to give some ideas, we've talked about which who would be the best pitcher for game seven. We've also talked about the best way to make a big egg and cheese. Uh, so again, it can be anything. So we're going to start this off here again. I have my randomizer. It is all set up. I have a dice as well. If it is one or two, I will go first. If it is three or four, Mac will go first. If it's five or six, Splash will go first. The roll is a one. So that means it's me going first. And my, uh, question will be, who will be the 2026 MVP? So try to look a little bit oh forward my. into the future. Yeah. Here on this one here. I wanted <laughs> to make sure that it wasn't just, you know, some of the guys that are con- always constantly in the in the video. This is one of my questions, so of course I get it. But yeah. uh for me, honestly, I, I could easily go with the homework pick, and I think I'm going to. Julio Rodriguez has shown amazing growth just from year one to year two, even. And I think that that growth could get even stronger and even bigger from there. So I think Julio is a very strong candidate uh candidate for being the MVP in 2026. I also want to give some ideas to get to guys like Corbin Carroll. Evan Carter's one that I think is could very well definitely be in that uh look as well here. But and you know what? I want to throw a pitcher in there. I'm gonna keep in CL. George Kirby is just so darn good. But I'm also gonna throw some love to Adley Rushman. Rushman as a good young catcher. That's always a good pick, I think, for going in the future. Remember, 2026, not next season, not the season after that, but the season after after that. So, still a ways to go. What do you guys think? I think Julio is a fairly safe pick overall. Oh, yeah, 100%. You can go Acuna, you can go Soto. You know, they're they're still going to be 27, 28 in that year, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't know what team Soto will be on by then, by the way. That's a good point. Uh, hopefully he doesn't go to the Mets, so he has good offensive production. Um, he he, uh, he, bro, he is, put Soto uh, in Colorado or in New York. Oh my at, god! At, uh, at uh, Yankee Stadium, he's going to hit seventy porch. home runs. I oh promise. Oh my god! Yes, that is the easiest. If you're Brian Cashman, uh, come. What are we doing here? Just it's, uh, trade for him. Trade the. Uh, maybe not Dominguez because he's hurt right now, but trade everyone. I don't everyone. know if you would trade Drew Thorpe. I mean, that's trade for Juan Soto and sign <laughs> Juan Soto. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm not even a Yankees fan. How difficult is it to load your lineup with left-handed hitters? You play 81 games a year with the shortest. I actually Fenway might be shorter because of the pesky pole, but in theory, the easiest place yeah. to hit a home run in Major League Baseball. You play there 81 times a year. Why are you not loading up on left-handed hitters? Now I I get it. Judge is Judge, fine. Torres is Torres. He's great. But what are we doing? Like, why aren't we going after the Seegers of the world, the Freddie Freemans of the world, Matt Olsons of the world? I don't know. A- Anthony Rizzo seems to be doing pretty well for himself. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, I I will throw another name out there. Uh, yeah, which uh, Gunnar Henderson, I think, uh, will definitely have a mm-hmm. shot. Yes. Uh, and then if I if I'm sticking with the Orioles for a second, Jackson Holiday probably. I mean, by that point, he'll. I mean, I expect him to be in the majors this coming year. Now that I think about it, uh, and I mean, I think Julio though has a strong chance to win. And who knows, he might win multiple by 2026. I mean, that uh, he's he's a true five tool talent, really. Uh, but I, I'd mm-hmm. be curious about, you know, 
uh, catchers don't win MVP all that often. Uh, Buster Which surprises Posey's me, the... honestly. Yeah, so Buster that Posey is the me. last one. It's that's uh, some it's of that's the game's play issues. Like if you're it, it's a that, catcher, you're gonna yes, you need to make up like thirty to forty games a year of production, unless you're like an outlier catcher. And those outlier catchers, like even Real Muto, every year, as good as Real Muto, generally not this year, generally is with the glove, and you know he does everything right, and he plays one hundred forty games, but yeah. he's going to be a one fifteen OPS plus guy in his best seasons. That's not going to win MVP, even if yeah. you're like. Buster Posey had to what win the batting title and have the best the plus title, in the yeah. NL. Mauer had to hit 360. So it's it's really tough for catchers because you're already at that offensive disadvantage because you're not going to play 155, 160 games. Like Acuna played 159 games this year. Otani's an outlier, but generally your MVP is going to play 150 plus games a year. So okay, here's my thing. I mean, this is again why I hate the term most valuable player. I think that overall, value-wise, a great catcher is going to be better than a lot of other positions, regardless of how many hits you have. And it's yes. going to be because of that, what they that, do. That's factored into war. I, that's yeah. It's just a matter of, would you rather have a great catcher for 130 games or a great shortstop for 150, <laughs> 155 games? I would rather have a great catcher for 130 games. Okay. Or I would rather take the catcher because at that point right now, a great catcher not only is going to have good offensive numbers, if they are good with it, they're going to be good defensively. They're also going to be able to work a pitching staff a lot right. better than a shortstop is going to be able to. And being able to control a pitching staff, like this is the argument we keep talking about when we have Cal, when we keep bringing up Cal Raleigh and oddly Rushman, is their ability to be able to work a pitcher, being able to calm them down whenever they need to know the strengths and weaknesses is going to make that pitcher even better. Like there's a reason why a lot of the best pitchers in baseball have a great catcher right next to them, or why mm-hmm. that great catcher is always like the first person that is talked about if a pitcher wins a side young, is because they have that exact amount of trust with them, but they also know that, that pitcher. Is go- that catcher is going to be is going to use them to their absolute value? Okay, question. Uh, mm-hmm. Would you rather have Adley Rutschman or Francisco Lindor one season? Adley. Oh my god! For Sorry, one Matt. season? Yeah. For one, okay, for one. Oh. Okay, I'll, I'll so give you, okay, uh, okay, 125 games from Adley, an average catcher behind him, and 155. Uh, we'll give 160 games for Lindor. Actually, no, I will go with Lindor on that because I don't. That's... I think that Adley still needs some time to. Mature. I don't think that he's as good at working with pitchers. I think that him just as an offensive threat and as a defensive threat is very good. Mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. think he has the – I don't want to say maturity because that's not correct either. But I don't think he has the ability to work with a pitcher as well as, say, like a guy like Cal Raleigh does. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, now you are just looking purely at the offensive and defensive uh, statistics. Whereas at that point, yeah, then you're obviously going to be – you're going to take Lindor. But you get a guy that can do – both of those things, and that just added an insurmountable amount of value to that player. Something that is that's a little hard to try and actually put into a full statistical bit there, which is again, it's hard to quantify, mm-hmm. but because it's, it's tough with catchers, because when you think of a star catcher, it comes with a lower level of offensive production. So, or even Lindor at shortstop, shortstop, same issue, right? So, if you're comparing like Lindor to you know, Freddie Freeman, obviously Freeman's the better offensive player, but if you're comparing them like apples to apples, like who's more valuable, you could argue Lindor is more valuable playing elite defense at shortstop as opposed to middling defense at first base, respectfully. So I I, I think that's the, the tough thing with like Adley winning MVP. I don't hate the shout. It's just that's why catchers don't really win MVP. It's just the games played and the general lack of offensive production. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, that's why, like, uh, Yadier Molina... Offensive volume. You know, at, at Yadier Molina for his career is, like, you know, by OPS plus and WRC plus, he's a below average offensive player. But, like, for a catcher, I mean, hey, he played, like, 20 seasons all at catcher. Like, it's he, yes, his it's offensive good. numbers, like, he was so, like, amazing defensively that, I mean, yeah, he can be a league average, slightly below league average offensive catcher, I mean, but... He's a Hall You're, of Famer, probably. Yeah, a Hall of Famer. he's a, he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, begrudgingly, I mean, I for the longest time I was not on the Yachty Hall of Fame train, but now at this point, it's like, oh yeah, I mean, he stuck around for that long for one team, 
You know, Can we put Brian McCann in the Hall of Fame. Oh my God! I come I, on, <laughs> come on. The F wars are very close, and one of them. Is I know that's the thing that F, F war will tell you that. Come but that's on, what man. But that's what I'm saying overall with this. This is gonna get another reason why I hate the term most valuable player because when you look at value, having that catcher that can do that ability is something that adds you in a tr- you can't quantify that amount of value, mm-hmm. and it's a huge that's amount great. of value. It's the most so it's the thing. same. Exactly. Small is also the Otani thing. Where the also, two positions... yeah, Otani's going to win MVP in 2026 on the Mets. So, you know. No, exactly. No, it's, no, it's on the Mariners. We already know that's happening. Not, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's on the Savannah Bananas. I don't know. What yeah, you're true, about. true, true, true. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to our next topic here. So, it's going to be between Mac or, or Splash Mac. You have one through three, Splash five, four through six. It is five. So, Splash, your random topic here is. What is the best dipping sauce? Uh, Chick fil A sauce. Next question. Incorrect. No, um, yeah, I am correct. No, we're done. Segment over. <laughs> Go ahead, Mac. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, wait, uh, I'm, I'm gonna. So I'm the reason I'm interjecting here is because, uh, if we're going like universal, like every restaurant has it, it's barbecue okay. sauce, in my opinion. That's the thing. Is but that Chick fil A sauce is only if. Only available at Chick Fil A and okay. Target. You now. do not uh, reach my levels of de- de- degeneracy. I I actually don't do this, but I would, in theory, bring my bottle of Chick Fil A sauce I bought at the grocery store to these I, places. I used to have one too, or get takeout. My grandmother tried to bring uh, the General Sal sauce or some oh. something like that. She tried yeah. to bring it to a restaurant, and we had to like physically remove the bottle. It's like, we're not doing this. <laughs> so, but the answer is Chick-fil-A sauce now and forever. I put it on everything that moves. For for my own personal reasons, I refuse to have anything when it comes to Chick-fil-A, but that's we're not talking that's about that fine. today. That's fine. That's fine. Just, that's but fine. it's the ingredients will, to it. It's I like, will, I'll it's like talk honey about... mustard and barbecue sauce, like, crossed. It, yeah. I'll talk. I'll talk about my favorite dipping sauce, and it's one that I will never get to probably use again. And it, I'm pr- I'm probably cheating on this, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, there is um at Red Robins for a while they had, they had these like tr- uh chocolate truffle sticks with like the sea salt on them, hmm. and they came with like a warmed uh extra sweetened chocolate dipping sauce with them that was absolutely perfect. Hmm. And so it's a bit cheating, I guess, because it's not something you can put on a lot of things, but yeah. it's something that you, you dip in and you have, and That's it was fair. absolutely delightful. Also, shout out to Mambo Sauce. Those in the DMV, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mac, it is your turn. And a right. uh, question submitted by Splash here. What is the biggest I'm him performance in MLB history? Oh, my God. Oh, give me a moment on that because there's – uh, honestly, if if I'm talking about like in our lifetime, I'm gonna go with Madison Bumgarner mm. in Game Seven of the World Series in 2014 because that was, I mean, first of all, that post as a whole was absolutely ridiculous from him. I mean, that complete game shutout in the wild card game. The you know he dom- dominated the Cardinals in the NLCS. He he lost one game. He didn't even pitch that badly in that game against the Nationals. Uh, but then, you know, strong in game one of the World Series, complete game shutout in game five. And then they come out on two days rest and close out that series. I mean, that was absurd. Uh, might be the greatest World Series pitching performance we've ever seen. I mean, the, the dude was unstoppable. So I, I feel like I, I have to give it to that. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a, a splash dollar if you can guess what made me think of this. What individual play in baseball history made me think of this? Mac, you probably have a better shot than Alex just because of what the topic is. What? Uh, yes. Is it from like this postseason? No. Uh... One of two moments. I'll give you two moments. One of two moments? Yes. Yeah. Um... Man, that's a. Uh... It's very specific, Mac. I think I you Mac has definitely seen it. It's like I've an iconic moment, it. a very iconic moment. Kirk Kirk Gibson. I no, mean... not not that far back. Oh, okay. It was in our lifetimes, or yes, <clears throat> yes. 
Oh boy, then uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm lost, man. That's... Okay, we are going to put some respect on Andy Chavez, the greatest defensive oh, player okay. in the history of baseball. Just yes, that that is the like I'm him. You have the the classic picture with the the uh sign the sign the advertisement at Shea. It's, it's AIG, art. Yeah. That he uh, uh, doubles off Scott Rowland. It's picture perfect. Also would have accepted Maglio Ordonia's walk off home run to send the Tigers to the World Series. I, I mean, I, 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 I got above, one. Above, somewhere above my desk, I have the Andy Chavez <laughs> bobblehead they gave out at Shea, where it's him leaping up over the AIG sign. So yeah, I I get where you're coming from. So I got I got two I got two quick ones. One's a homer. One one's not. The homer one, because I want to, and I don't care what any of you guys say on this one, is Kyle Raleigh hitting the walk-off home run yeah, off of Domingo yeah. Acevedo yes. off of the Hitting Here Cafe. The double? Yeah, that Edgar double, yeah, 100%. Um, but the other one I'm going to bring up here, not a homer one, and it's just because this story is so outlandish, I can't believe it's still true, and that's Ray Caldwell, pitcher for Cleveland here, that in 1919 pitched eight and two-thirds innings, and then was struck by lightning and came in and after yeah. a short break came in and finished the rest of the game like the, the 19 like, dude, Steve, that, it's, it's, you, were ridiculous. Struck, <laughs> you were struck by lightning you had lightning rain down from the sky and strike you right in the head and not even god not wanted say, him to finish that game <laughs> yeah he, and you know, he, he, said, I know what he said right there he said i don't care if you don't want me to finish it, to quote the rock, it Alex, doesn't you win. matter. You win. Oh, uh, you win. Exactly. That was art. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's uh, that. Oh wow. Goodness. That might that might take the cake there. That's that was beautiful. Um, that's up so, there with like Doc Ellis throwing a no hitter on LSD. It. So when yeah. uh, when Splash sent me the prod for this, the two moments I immediately thought of were Ray Caldwell pitching after he was struck by lightning and the Doc Ellis no hitter on LSD. So I'm glad you brought that one up as well. Uh, but right now, that the, uh, Pittsburgh pirate, uh, Pittsburgh parrot, <laughs> definitely. But that's it here for rant roulette. Let us know what kind of topics you would like to see. Who knows? Very well, they might be able to find their way into our. Hey, that's list. that's a good idea. We should that's have a, a listener. A idea, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, each of us uh, submit one, and we get a listener to submit one. That would be fun to do as well. I would love to have a anybody list and all of our listeners on our podcast, whether they thread this on Twitter or wherever you're seeing this at. Go ahead and. Give us ideas. DM them to us. Put it on Twitter anywhere you can. We would love to have your guys' ideas put in with us. Yes, 100%. Uh, I'm but sure. I'm, yeah, they can it'll, be baseball or not baseball. Stuff. Yeah. doesn't have to be about baseball. We will ask that it is, you know, podcast appropriate. Yeah, I, stuff, I, I but, agree. <laughs> yeah, what but, are your thoughts on the war? Um. Not so that with that, it's now time for trivia here. So I'll hand it back to Matt. <laughs> F-war. <laughs> yeah. F-war. Yeah, F-war. R-war. Uh, B warp, uh, warp, warp. Yes, yes. Uh, all was... right. So yes, it is trivia time, and I am hosting this week, and I'm going to be running back an old trivia segment. I was inspired by Inside the NBA this past week because they did their oh, inaugural, not inaugural. They did their uh, annual version of who he played for. So I'm running back <laughs> my version of this. You know the one where I I <laughs> ask a player and a team. Uh, you have to tell me. They actually played for that team, so oh, nice. uh, okay. So we we've done this a couple times. I believe mm-hmm. the last one we did ended in a tie, but uh, I have eleven players here. Uh, we have done that before I too. Uh, I'm yeah, really good at this brand right. of trivia. Uh, yes, so, <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so you guys, I'm, I have a number in my head between one and fifteen. You guys uh, both guess uh, a number, Eight. and this is how we're going to decide who's going. What would you say? Nine. Alex? I said eight. Oh, eight. Uh, the correct answer was 12. So, Splash, you're going Dang first. Yeah. Or you can choose to go first. Or Yeah, defer. let's go first. I will receive right. the kickoff. All right. So, your first player is Ichiro. Did he yes. play for the Miami Marlins? Yes. He had, He pitched for the Miami Marlins, actually. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. All right, yeah, a beautiful, perfect. beautiful day that was. And so had his three thousand hit on, on a triple. Yes, mm-hmm. against the Rockies. Yes, yes, sir. At and, Coors and, Field. 
Is, is right. he eligible for this Hall of Fame or is it next yes, year? I believe. Oh no, it's next year. This year is yeah, like Adrian, he, he came Adrian back Beltre, and played yeah. like six games or six mm, innings played, with the Mariners. Yeah, he, yeah, he, in the Tokyo series. That's right. Um, quick, okay, brief question away from the trivia: Is Ichiro a unanimous Hall of Famer? Unanimous. Uh, I hate, I I hate the unanimous questions. But bro. first, first I hate ballot. it too. First ballot, I hate it too because he's obviously first ballot. Yeah. But Mo was the first one to be full unanimous. It should have been Griffey, but it was Mo. Up to and the... no, it okay. With all due respect to Ken Griffey Jr., there are a lot of players that it should. We are talking about Babe Ruth. Did not was not Babe unanimous. Ruth wasn't unanimous. Babe Ruth wasn't even somehow. number one in his own ballot. Uh, <laughs> n- neither was Griffey. Willie Mays. Okay, uh, I need I need voters to justify these. How do you do that? How, uh, you know, what, you, what blows please. my mind, really, is that uh, one of the three voters who didn't vote for Griffey voted for David Eckstein. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing? And if your logic is, well, no one deserves it on the first ballot, that is the dumbest logic I've ever that's heard. The, worst the player one. is either Hall of Famer That's not, not logic. I saw logic. logic. That's man. bias. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? I okay, Adrian. Let's let's break down Adrian Beltre. Maybe you don't think he's a Hall of Famer. Maybe you only reserve it for like if you're Mike Schmidt at third base. Okay, whatever. Fine. How? Explain to me why Mike Schmidt wasn't a, a you you wasn't unanimous. Why wasn't Randy Johnson unanimous? Greg Maddox unanimous. Derek Jeter was one vote short. One we vote can, short, yeah. We can poke holes in Derek Jeter. Fine. Cal Ripken wasn't unanimous. Uh, pick your favorite player other than Mariano Rivera. They were not unanimous for some unknown reason. I understand. Oh, my goodness. There's nothing that gets me more heated than the unanimous Hall of Fame stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, you, I you should have seen my from. reaction. If you're if you're listening to the podcast, I was having a seizure about two minutes ago. Can, can confirm. He, uh, Splash was yeah. shaking uncontrollably. Mm. And my phone was in my hand, ready to call nine one one. How was Chipper Same. Jones not unanimous? Yeah, that, that one's. What do we? That, that one's. Stop, yeah. Tom Seaver wasn't unanimous here. My dad thought Seaver was going to be, but uh, he, mm-hmm. he was obviously close. was short. He was close. So, he had the record anyways, for a while now. Uh, yeah, splash, splash is on the board here. Uh, my beautiful uh, plan worked to rile Splash up for in the middle of trivia. Yeah, oh so my I, goodness. anyway, I'm gonna. We're going sticking with a somewhat recent player. Uh, Alex, your first player is Jose Bautista. Did he play for the Philadelphia Phillies? Oh, wait a minute. There was, I'm gonna say no, he did not. Oh, you are incorrect. I think that's his baseball reference photo, right? Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think so. In 2018, oh, Jose Bautista played for three of the five NLEs teams. The wow, Braves, wow. the Mets, and then the Mets traded him to the Phillies. Pirates so legend. that is your first strike. Yeah, Double that's race uh, legend. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. Orioles legend too. Yes. Um. All right. So splash. Your next player is Mark McGuire. Did he play for the Chicago Cubs? Ooh. Uh. Nah, I'm gonna say no. I think he only played with Oakland and St. Louis. Yeah, you're correct. He did not play for the Chicago Cubs. So you're up two two nothing with no strikes. Uh how is Frank Respect- Thomas not unanimous Hall of Famer? <laughs> <laughs> Back on this. Back on that. Uh anyway, uh Alex, we're sticking with first baseman named Mark. Uh your player is Mark Teixeira. Did he play for the Los Angeles Angels? Oh crap. Um I try to remember where he went to after I'm gonna say no again. Oh my This is the Mike Trout open. pick. This is the wow, Mike Trout pick. Oh, oh, oh you're oh, right. Yeah, no, he was trapped. Oh my god, you're right. Wow. Also, uh, Braves legend. I yes, forgot Bra- about Braves that. legend, and then the Braves traded him to the Angels in the summer of 2008. And he was unbelievable. Wow. He received MVP oh, he was, votes that year. In he the was AO. nasty down the stretch for the Angels, and then he decided, you know what, I. You know, forget that off that eight year contract. I'm signing with the Yankees. And instead, the Angels ended up with compensation pick, which they used to take Mike Trout. So, wow. Uh, Alex Ugh. is 0 for 2 to start. Uh, uh, so, Splash, your next player is Tom Seaver. Did he play for the Boston Red Sox? Uh, ooh. 
Okay, I know, obviously he was a Met. How is this dude not a unanimous Hall okay. of Famer? All right, Slash, obviously, come on. Obviously a Met, obviously a Red. Uh, I think he did play with the Red Sox. And correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't he on the 86? He wasn't on the World Series roster, but he was on the team, the Red Sox in 86, yes? That is correct. He finished his career at the Red Sox. He got hurt, and he was not on the World Series roster. But yes, right. he was on the 1986 right. Red Sox. Okay. So, all right, Splash is uh, batting a thousand right now. Uh, Alex, your next player is Pedro Martinez. Did he play for the Dodgers? Yes, yes, he did. Correct. He started his career there. I remember. Say the uh, line. I say the line. No, I you do it. I, I, I'm not. How was he not line. unanimous? Anyway, next up uh, for Splash, Trevor Hoffman. Did he play for the Giants? Uh, no, I think just Padres and Brewers. Uh, you're I mean, half credit there, but you, you say so yes, you're okay. you're correct. He did not play for the Giants, but he also debuted with the Marlins. So oh, yeah, uh, okay. he, got, he got traded for Gary Sheffield, if you wouldn't believe it. Oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah. So, wow, you're still batting a thousand, though. Let's go back to Alex. Uh, Yvonne Pudge Rodriguez. Did he play for the Baltimore Orioles? Yes, he did. Uh, you are incorrect, sir. Um, I just thought he played your... for a ton of teams. I'm like, yeah. all right, Baltimore's probably one of them. He, uh, he played for the Rangers. Seven teams? Yeah, the six Ra- Ra- Rangers, Rangers, Marlins, Tigers, Astros, Nationals, Rangers, Rangers again, again huh? Yank- and the Yankees, actually, back in 2008. I, th- I thought for when, okay to be fair when I thought when I answered the question for some reason I mixed up Pudge and uh Vladdy uh Vladdy uh Senior, mm. who I know was a Oriole at the end. Yeah. So so do you wait you know so I just Flash has pretty much secured this so but an uh, obligatory obligatory line I'm yeah. not going to say it again. Uh well Splash here I'll I'll just to to seal it uh Steve Carlton did he play for the Montreal Expos? Ooh. Uh, I don't believe so. I'm gonna say yeah, no. Yeah, you're you're correct. I've gotten that okay. wrong before, but uh, Steve uh, Carlton did not he, play for the Expos. He was on the '87 Twins. He was in the World Series picture. Yeah, he was. So he played for the Twins. He played for the Blue Jays. He played for the Giants a little bit. Mm-hmm. The White Sox. He began his career with the Cardinals, which I always think he was a Philly. Just like, I mean, I, I don't really. He was like. He won twenty seven games. The Phillies, the won team won like fifty seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like they were awful. Shout out to uh, the Phillies, by the way. They had one playoff win before nineteen seventy five. That's pretty pretty good. Uh, you know, do, do you guys want to just finish these last two outs? Yeah, why not? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's All do right, it. All right, so here I'll I'll throw this one back to Alex. Evan Longoria, did you play for the Giants? Yes. Yeah. All right. Good. Very recent. Right. That was very yeah. recent. I mean, yeah, he was on the Giants last year, but I mean, he's in the World Series. He's made the World Series with the two other teams he's played for, which I find hilarious. So that it took him the how long in between 15, World Series? To Fifteen years. Yeah. MLB Power Pro is a legend. MLB Power yeah. Pro is a legend. So we go. She John Boy Media actually put on MLB Power Pro. Yes, 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 they did. I haven't watched it. I need to watch it. It's I, I I'm flabbergasted. I'm Smeckledorfed. That's amazing. And the la- last player we had, I guess you guys already answered this, was Vladimir Guerrero. Do you play for the Orioles? Yes. No, <laughs> he, no, he, he did. did. What, what are you talking about? No, he didn't. Uh, he, he, had, he got a single on a ball that bounced. Yep. That was one of the greatest things I've seen. V- Vlad- Vladimir it. Guerrero is, I mean, dude was just amazing. Was I, just re- I just remember back, like, there was an all-star game. I don't remember when it was. It was still when Vladdy Sr. was playing. He actually got invited to the all-star game. And they made the joke about where is he going to swing? He's going to swing on his head, his shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, <laughs> his head, yeah, his shoulders, exactly. knees and toes. And he's going to make contact and hit 300 for his screen. Exactly. And they showed a video of him not only just, like, <laughs> every time they said head, shoulders, knees and toes, they um, showed a different clip of art, him swinging. Yeah. Art, this is cinema. This is thing. cinema. Shout out to Martin Scorsese. Oh, beautiful. So, anyway, Splash comes away with the victory here. Uh, GG's. Alex, I uh, hopefully, I will come away there, with yeah. another victory Sunday afternoon. Uh, the problem so, is that's, uh, that's in an area where I actually matter, uh, as opposed to me trying to do trivia against you. You're better than me at trivia. That's true. 
The problem is uh, my football team is better than yours. Uh, I don't think that's okay. been true the last, like, five years. Well, too bad. The problem is it's uh, it's still true right no, now. No, it hasn't been true I don't for care five years. You, you say that, but the, the problem is I'm looking at the stat sheets, and you see here uh, it's true. So, anyway. What stat sheet are you looking at? Is it brought look, to you by? Look at my stat sheet. You see, here's a clipboard. I got a clipper right here. Okay. See? That's yeah, stat sheet. Okay. It's telling, I That's think. what you said the last time. That's what you said the last time. And, and Baltimore walked in and uh, did a fourth yeah, and two that's, in your that's noggin. What, that's what we had no secondary. Now we have a full secondary to work with. You, well, okay. I guess you did just get Leonard Williams. I was gonna say run. Yeah, run yeah, but Leonard that's a, Williams is yeah, but okay. yeah, we have Leonard well, Williams and Frank Clark senior now too. Let's go. <laughs> listen, it's Geno Smith. He's gonna. It's gonna be a Geno to Geno interception. It's all. It's all over. It's all ogre. It's all ogre. Shout out to Strider. that G, though, bro. That Geno to Geno interception is going to hit. That's going to feed families. That's going to solve world <laughs> hunger right yeah. there. There the was Gino a to Gino. <laughs> I will say almost as good ago, as the Lamar Jackson to Lamar Jackson, but the Jets didn't activate him that game. There was, I remember years ago, one of my favorite things was I, there's uh, some line, uh, defensive tackle the Seahawks had last name Hill. And they went up against another Hill. That was the quarterback of the like uh, Sailors Rams. Yeah. Sean Hill thing. Yeah. And it, uh, he threw an interception right to him. <laughs> and it was, it was dad, that Hill to Hill connection though. Yeah. It's uh it reminds me of when uh, Brian Anderson hit a home run off of Ian Anderson, and I wanted off myself, but that was Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. I mean, I, just, I mean, the, what about like okay, we're, we're not Josh, gonna talk Josh about, Allen and Josh we're, Allen? We're not going to talk about the Will Smith, Will Smith play. Also, shout out to future three time World Series champion Will Smith, I guess. Uh, On three different teams. <laughs> yes. The problem is it's, still, it's only going to be two times, though, because the Dimax are still going to win, but you know. I don't know about that one, Chief. I um, mean, I know you don't, but the problem is I, mean, I remember, I remember the watching, better than uh, the Seahawks. <laughs> I remember watching Chris Young face off against Chris Young. That was a good uh, one. That was fun, one yeah. of the one of those people named Chris Young is not six foot ten though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <which> is, <laughs> I mean, uh, Chris Young was Chris, Chris Tiger. <laughs> Chris, uh, you know, Princeton Tigers basketball legend Chris Young. We have gotten uh, it, so far off the rails. Let's yes. go to the rails ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. I'd uh, like to go first here. All right, all go right, for it. So, yeah, sure. this is the m- moment to ourselves, you know, hey, 60 seconds, give or take a few, to talk about whatever's on your mind. So, Splash, you are up. Your time starts in three, two, one, go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Philadelphia Phillies, their fans, their organization is and will always be fraudulent. And this isn't about them beating the Braves. I made $2,300 on that. I don't really care. Back at it next year. But the Philadelphia Phillies cost me about 600 bucks last week. If they had won the series in five, I'd be up $3,000. If they won the series in six, I would have been up $300. Annoying, but, you know, fine. If they had just won game seven, I went out and got $350 from my bank account to throw on the Phillies to win game seven. You know what? They're going to win. They're not going to lose back-to-back games at home. They're like 28 and 11 at Citizens Bank Park in the playoffs. This is good. We're good. They're going to beat the Diamondbacks. We're fine. Brandon Fott is on the mound. What are we doing here? You have Bryce Harper. You have Kyle Schwarber. You have Nick Castellanos. You have Bryson Stott. You have JT Romuto. What are we doing here? And no, they lose. They lose game six at home. They lose game seven at home they cost me a solid 600 bucks and i am not going to get over that i understand you made me a lot of money you made me a lot of money about two weeks ago 2300 when they beat the braves in four thanks for that you know i i got my ravens jerseys i'll show them on the next podcast but brother in christ what are we doing why are we losing back-to-back games to the diamondbacks why are you lo- i am going to say we because i made the bet on this stupid team why are you losing back-to-back games to the diamondbacks what are we doing at home at home by the way you told me you were unstoppable at home you told me you weren't going to lose to an nl team at home i know you lost to houston last year they're not an nl team you beat the braves you beat the padres you beat the braves again you beat the marlins why can't you beat the diamond backs you two chances what are we doing okay that's it because the diamondbacks are good that's why yeah they're uh, unstoppable uh they brought in paul seawald that's all they needed uh the Uh, answer back it's 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 time for paul seawald to pitch how do you blow a 3-2 lead at home 
I understand the Braves blew a three one lead. That was at a neutral site and they didn't have home field advantage that series. Yeah. Why correct. are you blowing a three to two lead? I, I can what, tell you what exactly are we doing why. here? What I can tell you I can tell you exactly why. It's because the Phillies don't have someone named Paul Seawald in there. Yeah, that's the thing. They, they don't have. Oh they, didn't, they, didn't have they didn't have Paul Seawald to pitch. They blew a lead in Game Seven. Bryce they Harper did, had did. four hitless games in the last five games. I will say also Harper missed two fastballs down the middle in that last at bat he ah. had, which was. Uh, I I was fully expecting him to hit the ball into the freaking Delaware water gap uh, during that at bat. <laughs> also, uh, shout out to uh, Jake Cave. For the final, <laughs> out of the the final out, what do we do? <laughs> what, what, what's Jake worse, Cave. Jake Cave getting the final out or Vaughn Grissom getting the final out? By the way, I have not watched that. I will not watch that. I was at work and I just checked my balance and saw twenty three hundred dollars in my account. I wanted to off myself, but twenty three hundred dollars. But you also nice. got money. That's the thing. Yes, like yeah, I, there's. It's tough. I, I understand. <laughs> I I can gamble sometimes correctly. I'm positive because well, largely because of that, but. It's like a 50-50 shot, and the Phillies had way plus odds. Give me that all day long. But, bro, how do you blow a 3-2 lead? Uh, Alex, do you want to go next, or should sure, I go next? Let's, sure, right. let's go next. All right, I'll get going. Uh, I mean, oh, God, wow. Um, <laughs> Look, well, this has been uh, a very English? odd episode. This has been all a very right, odd ready? episode of Losses by right. Replacement. <laughs> uh, all right, your time starts in three, <laughs> two, one, go. All right, so last week during our Rant Roulette segment, I made I said something that pissed a lot of people off. And I was talking about the fact that I don't like eggs, which, you know what? That's fair. Um, Guess what? It's time for me with another hot controversial take. Uh, Halloween is the most overrated holiday, in my opinion. Halloween, like, here's the thing. I don't know fully what. I should love Halloween. I should, because it there's a lot of candy involved, there's a lot of good treats involved, and, you know, a lot of times, there's other good things involved with it, too. I have personal stories about why I should love it, but I don't. And the reason mainly why is I don't like, like, people wearing masks, I don't like people dressing up, I don't like going out and doing all that kind of stuff. I just get kind of, but also, I just hate spooky, spooky things. I'm not a guy that likes that kind of stuff, so, you know what, judge me before you will on that. But honestly, I think that overall, it is just, it's a little overrated in my opinion. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a fine take. Uh, honestly, that's not the worst stuff, take. stuff, like, what are we doing? Obviously but... not the worst. Like, last week did that. But I know this is a very Yeah, I mean, it, no, I, I kind of get that. I mean, I feel like uh, as I've aged, sort of like, I couldn't tell you the last time I acted like, I probably stopped trick-or-treating when I was 13. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like, I know that tomorrow, like, I'm, I'm going to... I'm busy during the day, so like I'm not going to be home at night. But I'm, I know I'll leave uh, probably a bowl of candy outside my yeah. door for like the kids. But like, Are I don't you gonna super glue it to your table or to the floor <laughs> or anything. Uh, maybe I should. Uh, you should do, what you need to do is they're you gonna have the bowl of candy. And you sit there like in like a little scarecrow costume or whatever, holding it out there just so you can scare kids that walk by trying yes. to get candy. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I've never. I don't know. What, what's your most underrated holiday? Most underrated? Drew, most underrated. that's the correct answer. Uh, no. Besides, you know, the, uh, if we, assuming we can't say that, you know, opening day, the holiday, I'll, I'll say Thanksgiving. I, I, I love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving yeah. is a very underrated holiday. Okay. Follow Thanksgiving question. and Fourth of July. This was going to be my rant roulette in a couple weeks, but is mac and cheese a Thanksgiving food? Yes, 100%. Yes. Okay, uh, neither of you have ever been to the South, apparently. I am okay with this. Uh, I, ha- it's I, have, I have look, been to the South. I can always vibe with mac and cheese. That's just me. Apparently, it's not. Apparently, it's not a Thanksgiving food. In the it's South. Con- I know that's controversial for some reason, but yes. Why it is, is it controversial? Yeah. Mac and cheese is I don't good. Know. Just I don't add know. it. I know. I know. Just You're already add eating it. that ton of food. Just add it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like bro, like, you you get sweet potatoes. You get like regular like scalloped potatoes. You get green bean yep. casserole. You get the stuffing. Just mac and cheese, mac mac and cheese. Just no, like, I, I feel like, like that's our, you know yeah. that's that's normally I feel like something. I I think we made mac and cheese last year. The year like what I've never uh, had it for Thanksgiving. It's for I think I think we did because like my nephew my nephew likes that type of stuff. I mean that's oh. you no. Know, that, I'm that's actually going to make uh, pizza rolls for Thanksgiving. Unironically, uh, that's actually a great idea. I I make uh you get a piece of puff pastry. You lay down some sauce, you put pepperoni, you put cheese, you roll it up, or uh, you uh, you uh, slice it into pieces, you get skewers, you like uh, 
snake it through the skewer, throw it in the oven or the air fryer. Excellent. Welcome to Cooking Tips with Splash here. Today. Yeah, yes. Well, about replacement. Instead of binging with Babish, it's uh, um, uh, it's succulents um, with Splash. I was gonna say uh, splaining with Splash. I like yeah. that too. There you go. That's going to be um, the new name of our podcast. Please no. Actually, but, that's um... okay. We can talk about this <laughs> off air. But when we run a daily podcast and it's just me, it's going to be called Splaining with Splash. It's going to be that day's baseball stuff, just in splash terms. You know, it's just so, going to be. I, actually, you know, I, so you yeah. see so me fully un- incomprehensible to anybody else except you. Yes, it's yes. like uh, why Yamamoto yeah. isn't going to go to the Red Sox. It's because he was good friends with. Uh, Oh my goodness. Uh, it's like a former Yankee, like a, a washed, washed out Yankee who was telling him like how baseball was in the pro or baseball was in the America. And he's a former Yankee. So it's like, he's not okay. Yamamoto is not oh, going yeah. to Boston. I, 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 his, I, I, his best yeah. friend's a, his best friend's a, <laughs> a Yankees guy. There you go. It, it's as simple as that. Five minutes. Podcast views going through the roof right there. The problem, <laughs> the problem is that point that you're still going to pay me royalties. I uh, for using the name that I just the gave, name, which yeah. we now have full record of now with this podcast oh, going that's out. Good point. Uh, <laughs> oh, did you guys see that? Uh, uh, Max still the... needs to do his moment to <laughs> ourselves. Okay. Let's this keep is going. More important. Respectfully, this is more important. Yeah, no, Incorrect. No, the NFL, the NFL has an issue with the Houston Cougars wearing Houston Oiler themed jerseys. But they don't have an issue with the Tennessee Titans wearing, wearing Houston, Houston Oilers Oiler jerseys. jerseys. That's kind of yeah. funny to me. It's a color. It's the color scheme. What's wrong Blue. with the? Also, gorgeous uniforms. Screw the Titans, but gorgeous uniforms. Will Levis, uh, mayo in your coffee. I'll pass on. But he was balling out yesterday. I, I wish I never heard that. Actually, um, as especially as a coffee consumer. Uh, actually, anyway, not his work. Actually. Yeah. Not his worst food take. Uh, he eats bananas with the peel on. Oh, what? Dude. All right, this dude needs to get his. <laughs> hey, guess me not oh like he eggs. He's so bad now. <laughs> he like he, he like min maxed football stats and food takes. He's great at football, I guess. Uh, I will we'll see. His food but takes are the awful. worst food takes of all time. Yeah, it's like Alex. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't say I me not liking <laughs> eggs is worse than someone who puts mayo in their coffee or eats bananas with the peel. See, I don't like coffee anyway, so I don't really care. Yeah. I do like mayonnaise, I'm, though. I'm the only coffee drinker here, I realize. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, I'm, I'm going to get going my 60 yeah, please seconds Please do right your here. yourself. Please all right, ready? <laughs> here we go. Uh, so, I just want to quickly shout out all the casuals who said that this World Series would be a dud. Uh, clearly, you should just stick to other sports because I think game one of the series proved that uh, this is going to go the distance. And yes, I will enjoy every single game that gets played. Uh, I also just want more baseball. And, you know, I think we should all just be rooting for a game seven above all. That's what I mean when I don't really have a rooting interest. I just want a game seven. I want the season to go as long as possible. All right, let's put it that way. Yes, the first two rounds of the playoffs were kind of a dud. The LCS was a re- both both series. Very fun watches. Uh, the World Series so far has been pretty fun to watch. You know, I just think, you know, just because, you know, it's not, you know, the Yankees and Astros facing each other in the LCS and it's not, you know, the, the Dodgers and the Yankees in the World Series, whatever, two biggest market teams possible, doesn't mean it can't be fun, fun to watch. Yeah, sure, the ratings weren't great in game one, but that doesn't mean it isn't a good series and it isn't good television. So if you – if you know, if you're a casual, you think this series is boring, but uh, I'll tell you right now, it's not. So that that was our, our that was moment. a W take. That was Harms a, yeah, yeah, Harms a W take. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're a casual, don't talk to me right now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um. Any, anyways, uh, so that that does it for our show today. Uh, let let us know what you think about this season as a whole, I guess, uh, and also this World Series. Uh, I guess the next time we record might be after the series ends. Uh, awesome. Who knows? But anyways, uh, let, let, let us know your thoughts and give us your rant roulette suggestions at LAR underscore baseball. Uh, make sure to follow us there. Uh, make sure to follow all of us on Twitter. Follow myself at Matthias underscore A underscore K. Follow Alex at the sports guy 242 and follow Splash at Mr. Splashman 19. But for everyone at Lost Above Replacement, thank you for tuning in. 
and I hope to see you all real soon. Take care.